I'm a reviewer. Let the reviews be joined. Hello once again everyone. Your friend Dima here coming at you with yet another video review. And as you can see, today we're going to look at Classics Jetfire. And let me first say this will be a two-part review for Jetfire. As with my other two-parters I've done, this is going to be the pre-look of Jetfire before the Ripple Label set. And then I will also do one of him after that. So let's jump right into this before outlook. Uh, as you can see, jet fi this Jetfire, I don't have any of his armor or anything like that put on just yet. I will show you that in just a moment, but this is your normal Classics Deluxe Size figure. Very cool figure. I so wanted this figure for a long time. Uh, I recently, well not real recently, but I got this in a... I buy from a friend off a well off a Facebook group that and I actually paid forty five dollars for Jetfire, uh, Optimus Prime, Classics Optimus Prime, and Classics Megatron. Sadly, when I received this Jetfire, though I already knew this at the time, he wasn't going to be complete. He was missing his helmet. He was missing his guns, and that was it. That's all. He, oh, he was missing a, a missile too, I believe, but he was missing those. And, but I've sent recently, up till you know, before this video, I've gotten those. So, all in all, not a bad buy at all. Uh, the other note on that is the Classics Optimus Prime didn't have his weapons at all. But I also received, got them as well. So he's also complete. But, uh, you know, this this is still a really cool little figure. This is normal. Basically, I, I've always considered this basically like an F-14 Tomcat design which basically it is it is very very cool image to it very called good G1 look to design to it as well though it's not technically at the same size and everything as that G1 as everybody knows but it's still a really cool callback to the original G1 it even has the rub symbol here which let's see if I can get it to show up should there we go really cool callback to the old G1's uh, it's got really good paint design you get all the white of course and you got the red strips all through it as well as the black pieces all through it that's basically the whole figures white red and black aside from this little clear blue translucent pieces here and on the, the head as well uh, it does have beside the the rub symbol there he does have a couple of symbols on his bottom of his wings which on the bottom it does kind of get the little look of you know where you can see his arms and you can kind of tell where everything's at on him but still really cool design on the back end I have to admit I really like this look for him too because of course as you know this is of course his feet and it's a good callback to the also to the G1 figure which as everyone again knows is the basically the Macross Robotech mold for jet fires that they used uh, but still it's really cool and of course I have to admit I really like this because I really like Robotech or Macross as it is called in Japan growing up it was one of my main shows I like watching I like Transformers I like Robotech I like GI Joe and as I got older you know Ninja Turtles and you know on from there but Jet fires this way. He is really cool jet design. Now let's get into his weaponry and stuff, his accessories, before we get into his transformation. First and foremost, you got his backpack or booster engines or you know upgrade armor weapons, whichever way you want to call this. Very cool. Very definitely a good homage to his G1 self. Uh, or his armor on that. Also, I should note uh, this design or this mold and that calls back to the actually into the comics of the uh, ID or excuse me the Dreamwave story and it's in the uh, premieres in a lot of it. He's in Stormbringer. He's in the uh, oh infiltration series and stuff like that he's in a lot of series in that and a, a lot of those series are actually really good because they all ran right through one another and they all tied in even with the spotlights he does make it a couple appearances in that as well uh, I'm 
trying to think of the one other the spotlight. I, I actually just reread it. Um, not RC. Yeah, Spotlight RC. He's actually shown in that as well. So he's in in this mold. He's in this mold and everything in several of those comics. So be sure to check those out. It's too really too many for me to list here, but still. Uh, but the mold. The, we'll go right back to this armor piece here. It is. Like I said, very gold G1 look to it. You got the red paint with the black decals. Or not de decals here. Not really decals, but you know, the black mold there. And on the side, you got the black for the engines, and you got the white for the basically the main engine body there. It's still really cool. These pegs here are what peg into jet fire, as many of you know. Well, to do that, all you do is make you take his tail fins here, fold them down, and just peg them into these little peg holes on the back of his body here. And we'll do that just so you can see it real quick. And there it is. All there is to it. Again, really cool homage to his jet mode, or battle armored mode from the G1 car G1 com cartoon. Or toy, excuse me, not the cartoon. He had no reference at all to that. But what else does he have? He has two missile launchers with a light blue missile, which is just like what he has here and on his face. Uh, not bad at all. It's got again, it's got the black and the red with the light blue, and it does fire fairly well too, as you can see there. Real easy to apply, little launcher buttons right here on the back. But for these, all you do is again, it, the little piece here, or tab here, pegs right into his forearm here on the body. Which again, you can just peg in right there. Right, It actually sits right below the wing, almost like it would look like if it was regularly attached in his Raider fighter mode, like a normal aircraft would carry. Though not technically like that, but there you go for that. Again, great looking figure so far. Again, next he does have his double barrel rifle, which this is actually I, I kind of like this idea, and I kind of don't. It is a good reference to his rifle that he had in the cartoon and the comics, of course, of the G of the G1 line. Because it's he carried a double barrel, big double barrel rifle. The thing about this is, is it splits. It's actually not one, but two rifles. You can actually just pull them right apart. And there you got two rifles. One, you can put them one in each hand. Or on this, on here in a moment, I'll show you on this. I just, I, I kind of don't really like, I like it, but I don't like it at the same time. Because I actually prefer the double barrel, because that was jet fire. I mean, it's a cool trick where you can do this, but still, and everything, I mean, it's, and plus, applying this in there right, you kind of, kind of show off, this, you know, the bottom side or the inside of it, where, it's, you know, they combine together. It kind of shows this off more because of it, because what you can do is you basically take them and you can plug them in right into his fist. I prefer to do it like this because this helps it to sit better. Actually, you have to, you have to do it like this because it helps to sit better with him with the landing gear and everything. Which I knocked it loose right there. But you just apply it right back into his fist with this uh, peg right there. Basically like a 5 millimeter. I guess you can say the size is for a peg hole. And just, again, here I am pegging it out. I'm pegging it from this side as well. Trying to get it in there. But it just applies right in. And there you have him with his guns applied. Not bad at all. I mean, it really does look pretty good. And it's directly up under there where it gives him a little bit more weaponry. Looks like more of an armored fighter. And lastly, he has his helmet. In the series, it, in the comic series uh, that uses where he uses this mold, or his form in the comics, he uses this a lot. It shows him with this and without this. Uh, special note: I should note that the uh, G this design for him actually first appeared in the uh, 
Oh, crud. In the uh, G1, basically on the G1. Uh, G, oh, shoot. I'm, I'm stuttering on myself because I can't. I'm trying to remember the name and it's leaving me now for some reason. But they, he comes, the mold for this first show was when uh, Starscream was fighting Sunstorm. Uh, I think it was actually in the Volume 2 or the Volume 3 of the Dreamwave G1 Generation 1 line. Uh, I'm probably mistaken on one of them, but it's one or the other. I know it's one of those. But Sun, Sunstorm's confronted him, and he, right before Sun, Sun, the Sunstorm had showed up, uh, Starscream had activated uh, one of the containment units that was there. And shortly after Sunstorm, he's arguing with Sunstorm. Jetfire comes out from behind and starts attacking Sunstorm. But and this is the mold he was or form he was in at the time. And he holds holds that for quite a while. But the helmet to put him for his jet mode, you have to actually you open right here. Basically, you see his head here, and you put it back onto him. You can actually have this on in robot form as well. It's kind of, I may just wait because it's kind of tough to get it in here because of the way the pieces are, but I'll just go ahead and do this just to get it done. I'm going to open this up to make it easier. And I apologize if I can't get you a good view, but slide it that way. And you just, you see, you just slide it right in there, which I'm going to have to, I think I'm going to have to flip the shield down a little bit to get that in there right it just basically just slides right over his head like so and then let me just put this back up close all this back and here he is fully armored up and this kind of looks cool because it gives it the little almost like he's got the machine gun turns right here basically for his jet mode but this is him fully armored up for his Cybertronian or Earth Jet mode. And the wings do kind of, you can kind of slide them back to give it that look for it. more aerodynamic or whatever for faster speeds, you know, attack mode or whatever you want to call it. How they, they basically describe this. But, you know, that's basically it. I'm mostly keeping it like this so you can see, you know, just how far back the weaponry can sit on the figure. But, all that aside, now that we got the jet mode situated, let's look at his, oh, before we do this, let's do one last thing. Let's show his main guns here in his jet mode. All to do that, like I just did, you just take this piece of the, the armor and slide it straight back. And it pops the gun out from the front of the barrel, or from the hooks up, port here, all the way out. And there it is, full, full attack mode. Very cool. I wouldn't want this thing flying at me if I'm in a fighter jet. Of course, I wouldn't want any of the Transformers flying at me if I'm in a fighter jet. So, But you can also flip the landing gear up to all the way where you, know, you can have them flying around if you want to. Or when you're playing with them, you can do it like that. But enough of this. Let's just, I want to flip these back real quick just to get them out of the way. We're going to transform him into his robot mode and to do that I'm actually going to go ahead and take his weaponry off just to make it a little bit easier and you can take this off, the, this off which I'm going to just to, for the show but to transform them you can go ahead and fold these down you take this panel back here you flip it up a little bit. I'm just going to flip it just a little bit up out of the way just to get it out of the way long enough to for the transformation down here. You flip. You can flip it over and you grab here and you pull this down and basically you have his legs. You can go ahead and unpeg them if you wish and fold these out to form his feet. And there you have him already standing up. Next, you want to take these panels here which one thing on also I should note on my figure, I'm gonna do it this way if you can hear it. Hear that rattling sound? That's actually coming from right in here in the basically his chest compartment. Uh, from what I understand, there's probably a little piece that's kind of broken off in there, just rattling around. It's nothing to worry about because it's not hindering anything. It's not hindering because a lot of 
I've been told that there's a lot of problems right up in here with this joint that something could snap in here and it could mess these up. And when you don't hear it do that, because it clicks in two points there and there, then you don't you have a problem. You have to unscrew them and take them apart to fix all that. But you, again, you flip these pieces all the way up, get his arms up there, and then you take this section as I for jet mode you unpeg a little bit here and you pull this down which I just knocked his helmet off of there but we can fix that easy we'll just put that right there back on his head and you take these panels here the front of his nose basically and you fold them up in and like so and I actually will peg there is a little Basically, all this will peg together. As you can see, there's this little piece here, which I need to zoom in here. There's a little piece right there, and there's that little hole right there. Which all you do is just flip it up and peg them into each other. And we do the same on, well, you've done the same on that side. You fold this down until it fits snug right in the middle of his chest there. My camera has slipped down. I didn't realize that. I apologize. And you take this, fold that all the way back, flip that up. And that's his chest mode, chest compartment or whatever. Again, on the back here, you want to take, well, let's get his head turned. That's the next one of the next steps. You take actually take his head and turn it all the way around the face front. Uh, here, you fold, you take it and kind of, Accordion it up straight up and then you fold this down you see this peg here this peg all here little peg right in And that's all there's to that mode or that part then all you do is basically you can fold this you can leave his wings down but The instructions actually call for you to do this to fold them all the way up Like so and then you just straighten out his arms like so and here's his robot form aside from his armor which we're going to apply now again this is the same phase back here for his backpack you just peg it straight in it does kind of feel like it makes him top heavy or backpack heavy but it does kind of work with him because of what you can do with the guns uh, we take the launchers and you'll peg them right back where they were on the basically on his forearms to give him that. Make some one on each side. And and you peg these two back together. You can see they actually combined or one of them has the little peg hole here, peg there and the whole joint you know the little hole or dip there for the peg to go in, you combine together, and you can just apply it to either fist. And there we have Jetfire in his robot form. Again, we'll just do this for the. You can flip these up, and once you get these flipped up, you can turn it forward. And I normally just slide that back up just to give it a better look. You slide that back down. Pull that up, and there he basically is, and I did a little bit bend there, in his full battle, basically battle armored mode. Very, very cool. I can, you know, like I said before, you do kind of, you can keep your, it does call for your wings to be up here, but I actually kind of like them down. I think it gives it a little bit more better look. Yeah, I mean, but it's your call. I kind of like it this, and I kind of at the same time because it kind of looks back to the G1 self or the Robotech Ver Valkyrie mode mold that they used. I mean, but still, in the comics, he, he is like this. It kind of looks to me, it kind of does kind of look a little weird, but still not too bad. Plus, it gives the Autobot symbols right there out there. But going into those Autobot symbols, uh. Well, let's, before we get into this, let's get the articulation. As you can see, his saw, his head is on a, 
small joint you can turn them around though it is kind of limited when you got the helmet on because of the antenna which you can move forward to give him even more firepower if you needed it which he does use uh, quite a, in the comic quite a few times in the, some of the battles he gets into you can do that and again as you saw he can go all the way around the arms have this ratchet right there and they can turn all the way around though it is limited thanks to the you know missile launcher and all the elbow does bend all the way up though mine is kind of stiff the fist is can rotate well the fist can rotate all the way around though there's no finger articulation the waist has no waist swivel but it does have the the legs right up here has the ratchet here where you can basically do a split if you want him to you can he has the joint here where you can do that and he actually oops, I just knocked that off well we'll just set that aside for the time being he also has the joint in the knee and then does it have no ankle or toe articulation at all either but still, it's not a bad figure at all. I really, really like this guy. I've always, uh, I'm kind of, again, I'm kind of impartial because I've always been a fan of Jetfire. Even, you know, back in when he was basically called Skyfire in the cartoon. But still, that's a cool figure. But, again, we'll just go back to the Autobot symbols there. If you go to repolabels.com, you can pick up this cool little set. Which, on a special note for this set of labels, I have to give a shout out to a friend of mine from Italy. I actually am in the middle of a trade with him. Sadly, mine, my part of the trade, I haven't been able to ship off to him due to some financial issues. And he, he understands this and he, you know, it is coming. I do promise him it, it is coming to him. But basically, the trade is, uh, I, I got recently received the uh, Dinobot, universe line, Dinobot from the Universe line mint in box and I went ahead and opened it up I was very careful in opening it and he made me an offer to buy the box from me if for either some money or something else and he made an offer for buying a couple sets of repo labels and he bought me this set plus another set for like right at about roughly with the shipping and all right at about 20 bucks because this one this set for the classic jet fire you can go to repolabels.com and get this for around twelve dollars but as you see you got two sheets here uh, you actually have it where on this sheet you have the Autobot and the Subcom logos plus you have the Macross logos as well that you can use to change his faction if you wish to to put them up here on his wings and whatnot uh, and you also have this sheet as well which will give him again he's got some more Macross logos and stuff and some other more colorful designs for him uh, again this is going to be part two of my video which I should have up later this week uh, I done I've done looked up on this. There are actually actually seven excuse me seventy labels to this set. And I also want to apologize. I said twelve dollars for this set. It's actually nine dollars and fifty cents. So I have it written down here just to make sure I didn't say the right price, which I did. I said the wrong price. But there's actually seventy labels to this sheet, and that's including all these though, because you got extra ones here. And what's odd is. I kind of dig the Decepticon one because at one point, in the, especially in the cartoon, he was a Decepticon for a little while at least. So I kind of get the homage to that, but still, it's a really cool little set. But uh, as for the video, guys, this is the end of my review. I highly recommend you picking this fa this figure up because I mean it is really cool. Not only is it a great design for Jetfire or Skyfire, and it's great. Great figure for your, uh, the classics line, but was also, as I said, this is a good homage to the comic design of him. And I'm, as you, many of you know, I'm a big fan of the comics. But uh, this is done by saying, as as no way we got everyone, please like, share, and comment below on this video if you like it. Comment, tell me what you think, and share it. You know, let your friends see it. Uh, if you like it so much, please subscribe. Don't feel free not to do that. I also post a link to the, not only to the repo labels where you can pick your own set up for the Jetfire, 
I'll also post a link to my uh, email account if you want to email me any questions you might have. Or I'll also put a link to my Twitter account as well if you'd like to follow me on Twitter. Tweet me about any questions you might have or even comment below and answer me any questions. But th thanks again guys for watching. This is Dama saying once again thanks for watching and hope to hear from you guys soon.